This mushroom is called a bluet. The uh, scientific name is called Lapista nuda. And it has a violet, sort of violet lavender color, especially underneath on the pores. The tops can be um, more of that lavender cover, color when they're younger. And as they get a little older, uh, they start to turn more of a, a tannish color. Uh, the gills are usually this violet lavender color, though, along with the stem. Here's another one that's opened up just a little bit more. And as I showed you that one that's opened up, see another one right down here? Very nice. Here we got another one. It's a little bit bigger. Still got that violetish hue to it. But uh, as they get larger, the, the gills look a little more white. They lose that violet color. And the top can look a little a little whiter, a little tanner sometimes. The thing about bluets is they're a fall mushroom. It is late October right now, I, think, I believe the 23rd. And they don't have a very long stem. They're a very short, squatty mushroom. So a lot of times they can be hiding under the leaves and you'll never see them. So you gotta look very carefully. It's been broken a little bit, but it's still good. I have another video on the uh, purple gilled Lacaria. Um, and I showed you how they have the real lavender sort of purple color gills. However, they have very uneven gills. Whereas these gills are very tight and very evenly spaced. Uh, you can see that video to see what the others look like. Now there's also a look-alike to the bluet. They look very, very similar. That is poisonous. It's called the silvery violet court. It's a Cortinarius species. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. They can look identical from the top. And they even have the same color gills. However, they have a very rusty brown spore print. And when you, when you find them and you pick them and you look underneath. Just trying to get my camera stabilized here. They will have usually a dusting all over the, the stem, a dusting of the, the rusty brown spores, and a lot of times kind of a cobwebby substance, usually like around the gill of the, of the edge of the cap, uh, maybe attached to the gills a little bit and maybe attached to the stem. In fact, sometimes it'll be stringing from the edge of the cap to the stem, and uh, the bluets don't have that. But the best thing to do, of course, is take it home and do a spore print. Uh, the spore print on the bluets can be from a whitish color to a really light lavender color. What I've got here are some bluet mushrooms. There's actually another one up there. It's pushed up under that stick right there. Now bluets, uh, the Latin name, I believe, is Lapista nuda. And oftentimes they are a, a more purple color than this. Sometimes they're more of a tan, like this. The gills tend to be a purpley violet color. <laughs> and this is actually not a bluet. This is the poisonous look-alike to a bluet. I'm glad I found these. So the one I do in my bluet video, I can show you. You see the rusty brown 
uh, dust kind of looking stuff. This one's a little older. This is actually a silvery violet quart. It's a quartinarius species of mushroom. And they still, they look like blue, it's a lot on the top. They have the purple violet colored gills, but they have this rusty brown. These are actually the spores that have fallen. You see them gathering around the, the edge of the cap here, and then also on the stem a little bit. A, uh, a blue mushroom would have a very light purpley violet kind of color spore print, but uh, the Cortinarius, silvery violet quart, has the rusty brown spores. So that is a way to tell one from the other. I thought they were bluets from the top, but sure enough I knew as soon as I turned them over that they weren't. So, that's a good thing to know. I figured I'd show you one more example of a the silvery violet quart. You can see how it's kind of silvery colored on top. Some nice violet gills and stem, but it's got that rusty the rusty dust, the rusty spore print falling all over the stem gives it away. Here's one that sure looks like a bluet. And to be honest with you, you know, there is a little bit of a, a brown color on the stem, but I can't tell if that's the spores that have fallen or if it's just turning that way because it's old and drying. It was laying right here next to some of these other mushrooms. And it was already already knocked out of the ground. So it may just be drying out. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is take it home and do a spore print to see what exactly it is. Now this one, I wasn't quite 100% sure if it was a bluet or a, uh, a silvery violet quart. The... You see right here on the stem, there was some rusty brown color. Again, I wasn't 100% sure if that was the spores. Sometimes it's a lot more obvious or if that was just the stem browning because it's getting old. But even though it's faint, that spore print is rusty brown. You can kind of see it on the white and on the, in the dark paper there. And you can actually even see it in the gills. So unfortunately, that means that is not an edible mushroom. Here I have a, a few bluets that uh, some of these have been knocked over. I think a lawnmower came through here. It's, it's right next to a public path. Anyway, this is actually what is known as the field bluet. It is not as, doesn't have that lavender color that the, the wood bluets do. The lavender ones are wood bluets. These are much more of a tan or buff color uh, with usually white to tan gills and whitish spore print. So just a little bit different than the wood bluet, which has that purpley color. I'm uh, cutting up some bluets to dehydrate. I just wanted to show you the difference in color between the field bluet and the wood bluet. The wood bluet is the more lavender color one. This one's the field, field bluet. More brown on top and the cream colored gills. These have more of a cream colored spore print. And these have more of a lavender colored spore print. Just thought I'd give you one more up close look at those gills. This is a more, a more sort of buff colored one. But hopefully the color comes out on the camera, but I can definitely see the, the lavender hue around the edge. Like I said, this one's opened up. You see when they're to the point where they're opened up past past flat, they're starting to almost go funnel shaped a little bit. Uh, by the time they get that size, they start to lose the, the lavender, but it's still there. So there are a number of mushrooms that I dehydrated for the first time this year, and the bluets are one of them. 
So I figure I better try rehydrating them and see how they do, because some mushrooms just do better than others. And I did that. I did overcook them a little bit, but they actually turned out pretty good. In fact, I could tell that they've retained their flavor. Uh, they're a very sort of a delicate flavored mushroom. They don't have a real strong flavor like something like something like Hen of the Woods would. Um, but it's a very nice, very pleasant flavor. Um, and even after being rehydrated and and cooked, I can I can tell that they've retained that. So, like I said, I I overcooked them a little bit. Won't do that next time. They don't seem to take a lot of cooking either because they're kind of delicate in nature. But I do want to mention one thing that um, I saw once. I spoke a lot about the silvery violet court. I saw one website that listed it as an edible mushroom. And so I did a little more research on that. And most guides and websites will tell you that it's not edible. A couple places tell you that they are. But um, the experts say that there is a toxin in the silvery violet court that may not hurt you right away. You could eat it and seem like you're fine, but it does has the, have the potential to build up in your system over time and cause kidney failure. So still I would say one that you don't want to mess with. I would definitely do a spore print. Make sure you have a bluet, not a cortinarius. And that's about all I have on the bluet. A very nice, very pleasant fall mushroom. Thank you very much for watching.